Hello, everybody. Welcome to your December second half 2022 video scope. And my assistant is making an appearance today. She's often sleeping downstairs when I'm filming. She just turned 10 years old last month and she's doing great. So she wanted to say hello, be a part of the message. So we're coming into um, a time of grace and uh, inner attunement as we move through the second half of this month. But on the 16th uh, in the sidereal, what's actually happening overhead, the psycho-spiritual, on the 16th, the sun is actually heading into Sagittarius, uh, the sign of Sagittarius for the next four weeks. So this is amplifying our higher consciousness, our seeking of knowledge, our travel, our expansion. And on the 17th, in the tropical chart, the time-based earth chart, we're moving into a beautiful Mercury trine Uranus. And this will happen three times. And I've talked about this in my Mercury retrograde video, which I'll put that link in the description and down in the comment section. This is going to occur three times. And Mercury uh, trine Uranus from Capricorn uh, to Taurus is all about your um, life direction, your self-esteem, your path in life. It will occur again on January 8th when Mercury's retrograde. So Uranus is still retrograde. Everything's going to start waking up by the 22nd of January and off we go. Um, and then its final trine will be on January 29th when both are direct and this will be bringing more external developments in your life. And some quick housekeeping. Webinars. I have people asking me, oh, they couldn't attend. I'm doing kind of uh, new earth energy um, webinars and channeling, um, you know, on plasma fields and elect uh, the electronic fields. So those are all up on my webinar store that you can purchase. The link will be in the description, in the comment section. And finally, all of my personal sessions, they have been reduced since October. I've had some folks coming in looking for coupon codes. So the price that's there is the reflection of the holiday pricing, the economy pricing. Okay. Now, as we move along, um, Jupiter is uh, heading into uh, Aries, and this occurs on the 20th of December in the time-based chart, where he will transit until April 20, uh, where he will transit actually until May 17th, and then he's going to go off and he's going to visit Taurus. But certainly Jupiter Aries is very inspired action. Aries is inspiration. And, and the guides say over and over, please take action when you feel inspired. The frequency and the energy that you bring to these new cycles or new chapters or new beginnings really matter. But with that, we'll also remind ourselves that we are in this retrograde period, which serves us human beings as a time for regeneration and quieting down from the external and getting much more in tune with the internal energy. That's what consciousness is, where the um, masculine egoic mind tells you is to focus 80% out there. Consciousness reminds you that it's 80% in here that then generates the external. So that's the divine feminine, which is allowing and seeding and tending to and honing and working with uh, the energy system, your own biofield and matrix. Now, um, in the soul chart, the constellation, Jupiter is only at four or five degrees of Pisces all month, the second half. And so this is really seeding that sensiate, the compassionate, the spiritual, the dimensional 
awakening and awareness. And Jupiter will continue through the Pisces energy overhead until April 2020, uh, 22nd, April 22nd, where Jupiter will remain uh, for the rest of the year. So we're heading into very inspired times here. But I really do feel this is happening. The Jupiter transit into Pisces is happening right around the spring equinox, which is a time when new birth is coming forth, just like Mother Nature herself. Because the solstice, which occurs on the 21st, uh, is when the sun heads into Capricorn in the tropical chart, the time-based chart. And it's a sacred time of rest and reflection, uh, this solstice. It's the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, southern solstice, southern uh, summer solstice in the southern hemisphere. And this is the longest night up here, the shortest day down there. It's the darkness, the shadow that can be a powerful catalyst for new growth and enlightenment. It's very much that bear energy, that hibernation energy. And it's the season of the sun's death and rebirth as it travels through the time-based zodiac, natural cycles. And the sun is the illuminating factor. It's our guiding star. We all rotate around the massive conscious energy of the sun. And it's the integrating principle of our evolution on this planet Earth. So great energy lives here and uh, we prep for coming changes and seed planning that will have strong birthing energy in my view um, at the spring equinox in April. Now on the um, 23rd is the new moon and in the tropical chart, the time-based chart, this is at one degree of Capricorn. Um, so this is speaking to a whole new system, a whole new beginning that will unfold when we see the full moon in Capricorn in the July time frame uh, with your life, with uh, authority figures on planet. It's squaring Jupiter in Aries. So, you know, we are moving through a time of... Um, <laughs> you know, seeding through what's insane and what's sane. And we are under strong um, censorship and propaganda programming. So, you know, if we have, and the guides have brought this in, and I heard this confirmed by someone else, 26, 27% of the population on planet who is seeing through these narratives and these control patterns and even um, people who are questioning things. When this inches up towards 30%, you have critical mass where real shifts in the external are, uh, have to, have to uh, come into form and manifest energy. But this is, does not preclude that happening in your own life. We are the creator of our realities. How we think, how we feel matter what feels good, what feels out of love, what feels in love, what feels life-giving, what doesn't, that is the discerning time. And to pay attention to those emotions because we come here to learn about our emotional body and how to work with emotions and to take note of what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Um, this planet is highly unique in that um, aspect of the emotional spectrum that is available for us to not suppress, which we've been taught to do, many of us, but to actually bring into awareness and work with. And when you're feeling heavy or down, uh, the new skill is recognize what's going on, what's triggering you, what have you read, what just happened, and to allow the experience to just be there rather than saying, I need to slap on a positive affirmation on top of this. But, but that's holding that and investigating it um, with interest and great care and then nurturing all of that with great self-compassion and love. Uh, that, that is the integrative process here, not shaming or judging. And then when you get good at that, you have uh, tools and skills that you cultivate to choose that much more consciously. It is a time 
of working with our own shadow, our own awakening, because that is what the reflection is out there. 80% focus in here, 20% out there. Um, so uh, this new moon on the 23rd is at one degree Capricorn and is squaring Jupiter and Aries. So this can be an inspired time. It can be a time to really take stock of your resources and your commitments and your energy, right? In the chart of the heavens, uh, up in the constellation, the new moon is at seven degrees of Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, remember, is figuring out how to merge spirit with earth life, right? <laughs> Which is what we're doing. And squaring Jupiter in Pisces. So working with that Piscean consciousness energy uh, to help us integrate spirit with ego, uh, consciousness with uh, being in our body. And so um, both very helpful uh, new moons. And then uh, we move into uh, also on this new moon, Chiron stations direct at 12 degrees of Aries. It's been retrograde since last spring. And Chiron and Aries in the tropical is all about uh, what is your identity really? <laughs> I mean, a lot of people, they're kind of amassing ideas from their parents, from their family, from their background, from what they hear on media, from what other people say. Uh, Chiron through Aries is the healing and reclamation of authentic identity that gives you energy and informs you as to your individual authentic path. Chiron stations direct in Pisces in the soul chart, which is about the learning and the healing quality of these new age systems, um, the homeopathic, the plant medicine, and the sentient force, the creative force that helps create worlds. So very powerful new moon. And then on the uh, 28th, up above us, Mercury stations retrograde at zero degrees of Capricorn. So it's sitting there at zero degrees of Capricorn. It's hyper suspended. When planets are stationing, it's like a magnifying glass. So this is a magnifying glass on power structures on planet and your own reality structures. And this Mercury retrograde above us conjuncts Venus as she is just ingressing, uh, heading into Capricorn. So Venus and the Sun are sowing the seeds of manifest form. Saturn at its highest, highest expression is the quintessential manifester. He's like the blacksmith, the forger. He can reshape that metal through the fire of spirit uh, to give new shape to um, form out there in our reality. So uh, Venus is really going to be imprinting this Mercury retrograde, which is all about uh, the recovery of our self-love and our self-respect and our self-esteem and all of these things that are so evident in the population, all of the trauma and the woundedness that we're seeing in our leadership, in our media, in so many of our power structures are so wounded wounded and toxic. Uh, rather than trying to meet that, we go within to lighten ourselves up knowing that this is the formula for manifest creation out there. So uh, Mercury will station direct January 13th in the soul chart at 13 degrees with Sagittarius and doesn't re-enter that zero degree point. The uh, world point, the Aries point until February 7th. So we're going to see incremental developments that aren't occurring because you're making them occurring per se, but because the timing is right for them to occur. You hold the fire, you hold the flame of intention and well-being. And in the uh, tropical chart, the time-based chart, Mercury retrogrades at 24 degrees of Capricorn and is also conjunct Venus as she continues and finishes up her journey. Venus in Capricorn enjoys tradition, the past, perfect for the holidays, um, is kind of interested in status and where people are on the societal scale, but 
Venus is also the love for uh, your own path, uh, your own life direction, and being the steward of that um, in a love-based manner. So this is a very deep and rich um, uh, energy uh, sequence we're working with here. Um, and remember, um, many of you, many of you who watch me, you're here, you've been called here to aid in the increase in this light and the vibration on planet. And this may be quite without external validation at this point, or even understanding, certainly from people around you, but this is where you're being called to your own inner attunement and inner vision and holding that light because your reality is what you think it is. Your reality is what you feel it is. And I know many of you feel quite alone and isolated as you're seeing, as you're part of this 26, 27%. And I remind you, you are not alone. Uh, we're peppered all over. And additionally, we are living in some mm, mm, social media programs where we can't speak as freely anymore. So I draw your attention to that. What we've seen is a lot of self-censorship on planet the past three years, which works well for those who are seeking to control mind and control speech. Uh, so I just draw those lovingly to your attention and validate that and acknowledge that you are not alone, that you are seen and you are certainly felt. So I wish all of you much love uh, through this time and happy new year and uh, much peace and well-being and um, uh, joy interlaced in some of this, okay? Much love. Be well.